Hello and welcome to the Educations Podcast. My name is Brad Davis and today we will be discussing the way that writing has changed in the 21st century with all the new media and technology. Um, the way I see it, there's two big ways that writing has changed in the 21st century and the first one has to do with all the different ways that people can write and a lot of stuff that isn't what wouldn't be normally considered writing for previous generations and also the ability of what we're able to write about so we'll start with the change in what can be considered writing so for most of human history writing has been a way of really telling stories you know you started out with really actually no writing at all but oral traditions of poetry and myths and stuff like that and eventually we started writing stuff down to record all these things and also to help with business transactions stuff like that and eventually it morphed into the different languages the different writing systems we have but for basically most of our existence the goal of writing hasn't really changed that much once we start getting to the 1800s, you start getting to Horace Mann and the start of uh, generalized schooling, writing does change a little bit and it can it begins to be used to assess how much a student knows and what they're able to record on paper. And it kept writing's always kept that even to today, but it did start to change even before um, the 21st century. Eventually, during like the progressive era, you had handwriting became a really big focus of writing. You also had writing as a way to show experiences, as kind of like a window to the soul kind of thing. And that continued for a while, really up until the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, where you kind of had this focus on the process of writing, looking at different famous authors, how they wrote their stuff, breaking down all writing into different components and it just kept pro writing pro kept progressing from there until we get to the point where we are now and that's in a very different writing world where there's so many different things that can be considered writing that wouldn't have before you look at all the different ways that people are now able to express themselves with social media youtube just the internet in general and it's given us a way to express our thoughts and create information that we never had the ability to before i'm someone i have very little computer skills and yet i'm able to create a podcast i'm able to create videos we have people who are posting their life stories to instagram and none of this stuff could even have been thought as possible before and none of it would have ever been thought as writing but that's something that really needs to change in the way that we teach writing because this is how most of our students are going to be doing their writing expressing their feelings it's going to be through tweets through instagram posts through youtube facebook everything like that and while writing a full-length traditional essay is important and it teaches argumentative skills and it teaches how to create ideas and support your own ideas that's not the actual writing component itself isn't really going to help them very much because most of the students are never going to have to write something like that after they leave school but the spot where they really are going to have to write is in with all the social media and so it's really important that we start to teach our students how to express themselves on the internet how to write social media posts create videos create music videos everything like this because it's a way to express themselves and it's a really powerful tool and if they're not being taught they're going to be teaching themselves and if anybody's spent any time on twitter or just generally on the internet you know a lot of people aren't very good at expressing themselves and it just basically ends up as a shouting match and racial slurs and everything like that and for some of those people you're not going to be able to stop them because the internet gives people some an anonymity but if we're able to teach our students how to the best way to write for this digital age write using this technology students will be able to express themselves a lot more efficiently and they'll be a lot more open to expressing themselves than in the ways that we're teaching them now using traditional writing methods. Uh, 
And that's a big part of Yancey 2009, which is also where I got the history of writing st um, from. And a big part of the Yancey paper is that we need to change the way we see the writing hierarchy of importance. And it's we have our traditional writings on top for education and kind of this digital literacy and all that kind of stuff on the bottom. But that really needs to switch because the digital literacy is where all of our students are going to be doing most of their writing throughout their lives. And if school is not preparing them to do stuff for the rest of their lives, then what's really the whole point of schooling? Now, it can be easy to say that we need to incorporate a lot of these new writing modes that students are going to be using in their everyday life, like social media, but it can be a lot more difficult to figure out how to actually implement them into our lessons and how to implement them well. Um, a big problem that, that teachers can have is they can come off as not really feeling genuine and feeling like they're just trying to identify with the kids with the stuff that the kids likes and just kind of shoehorn social media writing prompts into in their own lessons that have already been created and they end up coming off kind of like the hello fellow kids steve buscemi meme where they're just trying to be you know hip with the kids and the kids know that and it just takes the kids out of it because they know it's just a dumb way for the teacher to try to feel like they identify with the kids and this is something that you really want to avoid because if the students are being taken out of this kind of lesson and they don't feel like it's genuine, they're not going to want to do it. And the kind of whole point of incorporating these different kinds of modes is to increase student interest and have them writing with things that they'll actually want to use. Now, the way to do this and do it well is to have is to create lessons that are unique and based around the social media. Don't shoehorn it, a social media part into an already existing lesson. And now that is not going to be easy for teachers to kind of totally change their lessons up and base it around these new writing modes. But that's kind of what needs to be done for students to really feel like it's a genuine attempt to do it. In uh, Beach et al. from 2010, there was a good example where a teacher had students creating social media posts for different historical figures and stuff or based on different kind of social problems that they want, that, that they believe need to be addressed. And this, it's a lesson plan that's designed specifically for social media to be used. And it comes off as a lot more genuine and students are a lot more receptive to that kind of stuff than it, if it was just shoehorned into an already existing lesson plans. Now, while including these new t modes of writing into our curriculums and our lessons is the biggest change that needs to happen with the new media and new technology, it's not the only change that media and technology has created up for writing. And the other big change is the fact that students are able to do research a lot easier now. You know, I'm sure everybody, at least of my generation, has heard some adult say that, oh, when I was your age, we had to go to the library and check out books to figure out all this information. And it's true, and that's what they did. And it's great that we don't have to, because now we can just type stuff into Google and stuff is just going to pop up and we can sift through th so much more information. We can find information from so many m different sources from different places. And that's really important because it allows students to avoid or see different biases. Because when you're stuck only reading books, you're limited by the books that that place has. And depending on where you are, what sort of books that that place has can be naturally biased. It may be biased towards a certain viewpoint. And the difficulty in trying to find books and find information is going to make it so you're less likely to keep searching and search for more and more information because it's just so much extra work. So what ends up happening is a lot of times the opinions that the students are finding from just using books are not going to show the full picture. And of course, 
a lot of students who are doing research online, they're not going to want to go the extra mile. And it's going to be the same problem where it's still just as biased as if you were just searching through books. But if we as teachers are able to push the students to do more research, find different sources that have different conflicting biases, what can end up happening is when these students are creating their writing and they're getting sources from two different competing biases, they're going to be able to sift through it and they're going to have a better argument and they're going to be better equipped to understand biases out in the real world. And the ability to search for extra information and find a variety of information with, from a variety of sources with a variety of biases using the internet makes it a lot easier for us to teach biases to our students. And it's going to be important that as teachers, we increase our expectations for the sources that students find and it increase our lessons of what biases are, how to find them, how to kind of see through them and how to understand them. Because without that lesson, students are, are going to just find whatever fits their viewpoint or, or whatever is the first thing that they find that's going to create their viewpoint and then they'll just find whatever suits that afterwards. And that does a disservice both to the student and to the student's writing because they're not getting the whole picture. They're not able to argue from both sides to figure out what's actually the best scenario based on all of the information provided. The new, the new media and technology that currently exists give teachers the unique ability to affect students' writing that they're going to be using all of the time outside of school and after they leave our classrooms. And it's imperative that teachers are able to take advantage of this opportunity.